the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is how our God is introduced in the book of Genesis. You know, at our last session, we looked at our generational connection. It's an undeniable truth in our human story. We're connected in session one from creation, right? To session two, Adam and the fall, to session three, Noah and the flood, through to session four, to all of his descendants that then become wicked and build the Tower of Babel. And then from session four, we go specifically into the family of Terah, whose son is Abraham. And we go Abraham, Isaac, and now we're at Jacob. But what is so special about these humans and what, for that matter, is so special about us as humans individually? I mean, this is not a superhero story. None of these guys are actually epic with amazing powers of any kind. In fact, Genesis almost goes out of its way to portray them as flawed, ordinary human beings. A guy who's worried that he can't have kids, so he goes and has a kid his own way. Um, somebody who's so nervous about um, God's promises that he, he believes a lie from Satan. Um, or maybe Cain who murders Abel because he's really jealous. There are no perfect people in the book of Genesis. This is not a book of action heroes or, um, or of PR glossed up propaganda where it's like a curated, specially curated Instagram feed where it skips out all of the ugly things. Genesis just tells it as it is. And that's what we get with Jacob, the topic of today's session. Jacob, who becomes Israel, is a perfect case for our flawed humanity. His story is broadly one of cheating. He cheats, then he gets cheated. It's a human problem. Okay, let me tell you one confession. When I was younger, I'm not very proud of this, I used to cheat at Monopoly. I'd play with my family members, Oh my goodness, the stakes aren't even that big. But somehow, for some weird, re broken reason, I needed to cheat to beat my sister, to beat my mom and dad, to beat my friends. Like, I I'm so embarrassed, I, I don't do this now. But what is it in us that causes us to cheat? I, I think it's inherently human. Genesis 25 tells the story of how Jacob tricks his brother Esau out of his birthright. Esau, who's so short-sighted, he just wants, you know, some food uh, right here now, and so he gives up his birthright. But you know what? Um, a lot of theologians actually look at that episode and go, that story's told, but it's not even that it was very significant. Probably Esau didn't even think twice about his birthright. In fact, um, Jacob's father, Isaac, probably didn't even think twice about it. That's why by the time it gets to the giving of the blessing, um, uh, uh, Jacob doesn't just pull out, I've got a copy of the birthright. In fact, what happens when the blessing comes around again, he's got to cheat one more time. He's got to go pretend like he's his brother Esau, right? And, 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 and his mom now is in on the whole thing. So it's cheating that then begets more cheating. And then he runs away from fear of his brother because he feels like his brother is going to kill him for stealing his inheritance and for stealing his blessing. But then he runs to Laban who cheats on him. He wants to marry Rachel, but Laban gives him Leah for seven years of working and then has another seven for Rachel. Um, 
So all we hear in this account is just cheating after cheating. But in a surprising turn of the story, we discover that when Jacob comes back to Esau, Esau introduces a new element into the story. He doesn't re repay cheating for cheating. Instead, he shows grace to his brother and embraces his brother. What happened? How did Esau turn? You also see the story of Jacob when he fights with God and God wins, renaming him to Israel. What we see in the story of Jacob, both in Esau turning and showing grace and in God ultimately winning over Jacob, renaming him and giving him another chance is that God beats all with His grace. It is the infirmity of man coming up against the grace of God, with the grace of God winning. Consider what Isaiah says about Jacob. Isaiah 41 verse 14 says this, Fear not, you worm, Jacob, you men of Israel. Not very flattering. I, says God, I am the one who helps you, declares the Lord. Your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. Or in 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9, But God said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. That is the beautiful message of Genesis repeated again and again. Whether it's the fall, it's murder, it's pride, it's lying, it's cheating. If we are just able to humble ourselves and turn back to God, 1 John 1 9 says that He will be faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from our unrighteousness. I think what we want to get out of this story of Jacob is another realization that we have a tendency to cheat that we only really deserve to be cheated upon in this dog-eat-dog -dog world of the human journey. Yet God has a better way for us. He's got a better plan. And I hope that you'll see in Jacob's story a glimpse of grace and of hope and that you'd reach out your hand to God for His grace, confess your sins, but also extend grace to others. God bless you.